Welcome friends, my name's Chris. I'm from Transformation Nation Yoga and Wellness. And welcome to Gentle Vinyasa. In this practice, we're gonna be working on a twist intensive practice. So we're gonna be doing gentle twists from lots of different positions. Now, to be safe, uh, to be effective, to get the most out of your practice, what I recommend are a sticky yoga mat like I have behind me here, at least one, preferably two foam or cork yoga blocks. And there's one thing that we're gonna be doing for which I'll be using a bolster. Now the thing that we're gonna be doing is a yogic squat. So if you can do a healthy natural squat um, without having your heels lifted, without anything under your heels, that's great. You could place a block under your seat. Um, I prefer to have my heels grounded into something. And for that, I'm gonna be using a bolster. Another good alternative would be a folded blanket. So pause your recording, roll out your mat, gather up your props, and when you're ready, press play, and I'll join you on your mat for gentle vinyasa. So make your way into a comfortable seat, and it can be any comfortable seat. Uh, I'm going to choose a cross-legged seat today. There's no reason you couldn't do this from hero's pose. But, but have a great alignment of your posture. So visualize your head floating over your shoulders, over your hips. And in fact, we're gonna try to lengthen that. You could do the same thing from a hero's pose. On your next inhale, breathe in through your nose, press down into your seat, feel for a lift out of your heart and the crown of your head for the stars. And then exhale through your mouth. <sighs> Two cleansing breaths. Take a deep inhale through your nose. And then open your mouth, let it go with an ah. ah. One more, just like that. Deep, life-affirming inhale through your nose. Sipping as much air as you feel like you can possibly hold. And then open your mouth, let it go. Ah. Maintaining that length in your spinal column, take your left hand, place it on the crown of your head. So the left elbow is pointing off to the left for you. Inhale, lengthen out of your spinal column again. And then as you exhale, lower your left ear in the general direction of your left shoulder. Left arm here, not exactly pulling, but allowing the, the weight of your arm and forces of gravity to draw your left ear any amount closer to your left shoulder. And you can, if you like, um, start right away with an ujjayi breath. Inhale through the nose, exhale through the nose or mouth. You'll feel for that light constriction at the base of your throat, those, they call them the whisper muscles. And that audible quality of your inhale and exhale like an ocean wave. On your next inhale, use your left hand, guide the crown of your head back up to neutral. Pivot left elbow so it points toward the front edge of your mat. Inhale for length, and as you exhale, drop your chin down towards your left shoulder. We're looking for a, a stretching sensation on the back right side of the neck. So tons of twists today. And one mistake that I made early in the practice, and this is a pattern that I've seen that I feel like has come up a lot in my life, is, is um, my understanding of the nature of the world was if a little of something was good, then a lot of it was great. And that's almost never, what I found is that's almost never true. And that certainly includes twists. Your next inhale, use your left hand, guide the crown of your head back up the center. Exhale, release your left hand down to your lap. 
Then we'll change sides. Right hand to the crown of your head, right elbow pointing to the right. Inhale to lengthen. Exhale, fold your right ear and any amount closer to your right shoulder. So just because a little of something is good, doesn't mean a lot of something is great. So with twists specifically, um, my understanding was twists were detoxifying and to get the maximum detoxifying uh, effect, you had to really grind into that twist. And there are two things wrong here. One is um, I have never been shown, like we, we say that twists are detoxifying I've never been showed any kind of uh, research or clear evidence that there's any truth to that whatsoever. So I think there's lots of good reasons, like articulating different movements of the spinal column makes perfect sense to me. But are we detoxifying organs? I, I don't know, I don't know, maybe, but I've not been presented with any evidence to, to lead me to believe that that's credibly true. Your next inhale, use your right hand ground the guide the crown of your head up to center, pivot, rotate that right elbow forward, inhale for length, exhale, fold your chin down towards your right shoulder, any amount. Again, what we're looking for is a stretching sensation in the back left hand side of the neck. The second thing about with twists specifically, if a little bit of, is good, uh, then a lot is great. Um, the sacroiliac joint. There's tons of things that we can do in yoga to, to strengthen, stabilize, and make the SI joint healthy. But there are also some things that if we do them unskillfully can injure and irritate the SI joint. And one is being too aggressive with twists. So one of the things I'm going to ask you to think about today for each twist, think about twisting in opposite directions at the poles of the spine. So if we're twisting to the right, as the heart twists to the right, visualize and engage muscles so that the hips twist to the left in the opposite direction. And I feel like this makes some intuitive sense. If you're wringing water out of a dish rag, you wouldn't just... Um, really, really ring it aggressively at the top and leave it at the base. You twist it in opposite directions. But it also means often we don't feel like we're going as deep into the twist. Your next inhale, lift the crown of your head back up the center. And then as you exhale, you can release your right hand to your right cheek. So maybe the, the heel of the hand is at the base of the jawline. Chin is neutral, level with the earth. And the right hand is going to resist movement, but engage the muscles in the neck as if you were trying to vigorously turn your head to the right. So turning into that right hand and the right hand pre prevents them. And then release that effort, relax the muscles, release your right hand down to your lap. Take the heel of your left hand to your left cheek. Chin, again, is neutral. Same thing. Left arm resists movement. Engage the muscles in your neck as if you could vigorously turn your head to the left. And breathe. Breathing the whole time. Relax the effort. Release your left hand. Bring the heel of your right hand to the jawline. Lift the chin up as if you were looking up at the beautiful full moon we had last night. And with that lifted chin position, right hand resists a movement, engage the muscles to vigorously turn the head to the right. Relax the effort, release the right hand, return the chin to neutral. Heel of the left hand to the left cheek. Lift the chin, left hand resists, the neck muscles engage, turning the head to the left. And breathe. Relax the effort, 
release the left hand, return the chin to neutral. Heel of the right hand to the right jawbone. Drop your chin down as if you were looking at something down on the earth. Uh, maybe beautiful wildflowers that are in bloom right now. Right hand resist, turn the head to the right. Relax the effort, release the right hand, lift your chin back up to neutral. Heel of the left hand to the left cheekbone, drop the chin down, looking at the blue bonnets. Left hand resists, turn your head to the left as if you could. Relax the effort, release the hand, lift the chin. This time, take the heel of your left hand and place it on the back of your neck, or the sort of the side of your neck, just below the right ear. Heel of your right hand rests on the back of the left hand, and then start peeling the heels of the hands down toward the collarbone, but super, super slow. Like maybe a 20 or 30 second glide from where the hands started until they reach the collarbone. And then once the heels of the hands have reached the collarbone, let them glide past and really engage the fingers, pulling into the soft tissues on the side of the neck until the tips of the fingers meet the collarbone. And then heel of the left hand back, that there's a jutty uh, bony protrusion there. That's where we started. Now walk your left hand ever so slightly further back toward the back of your neck, maybe centimeters difference. Right hand on the back of your left. Peel the heels of the hands, pulling over to the left and down toward earth in the direction of the collarbone. 25 or 30 second glide. Heels of the hands, past that landmark of the collarbone, and engage the fingers. Pull those soft tissues to the left and down until ooh, the tips of the fingers reach the collarbone. And this for me is a hurt so good sensation. And then one last time, find the bony protrusion, slide the heel of the left hand back toward the back of the neck where you were before, and then a little bit further back. Right hand to the left, 25 to 30 second glide. So for this to do what we want it to do, like I think it probably shouldn't be comfortable, but it also shouldn't be painful. So find that like we're surfing that threshold in between discomfort and pain. Ooh, engage those fingers, pull down into the left. And then we're gonna set up on the other side. Heel of your right hand, behind your left ear, find that bony jutty protrusion, that's our landmark. Left hand on top of the right, and then pull the heels of the hands over to the right, down toward the collarbone. Nice and slow, 25, 30 second glide. Heels of the hands reach the collarbone. Engage with the fingers. For me, this feels like cupping, like cupping the back, the side and the back of the neck. And then heel of the right hand, bony protrusion first, slide it, that the heel of your right hand further toward the back of your neck, left hand covers right, same thing, slow glide. Our necks do so much for us. And often we don't do much intentional for our necks until we're injured, until we're hurting. I think that's pretty normal. 
One more time. Bony protrusion back toward the back of your neck where you were last time, ever so slightly further back, long, slow glide. I remember as a kid um, going on car rides with my grandfathers, not at the same time, one at a time, and neither one of them could turn around, could turn their head to look behind them, to look into the back seat. And I didn't understand it. It didn't make any sense at all. I could do anything I wanted with my neck. But I'll turn 52 this summer, and I will tell you, I kind of get where they're coming from now. Okay, release the hands down again. On an inhale, sweep your arms up over your head. Palms meet, lift your gaze, look at your hands. Exhale, slice your thumbs down towards your sternum, hands to heart center. Inhale, reach your fingertips up toward the stars. This time as you exhale, left hand to the outside of your right thigh, right hand down by your right hip, our first twist. On an inhale, find length, press into your seat, lift out of your heart in the crown of your head. Before you turn your heart to the right, start shifting your hips, rotating your hips back to the left, and then heart to the right, your hips to the left, and breathe. The other thing that I see in twisting a lot, sometimes we turn our heads to the right and we feel like we can get more twist. And I don't know that that does much good for me and my twists. It may work for some people. On your next inhale, release the twist. Sweep your arms up over your head. Exhale, draw your hands down into heart center. Inhale, sweep your fingertips up toward the heavens. Lift your gaze, look at your hands. Exhale, right hand to the outside of your left thigh. Left hand down by your left hip. Inhale for length. Exhale, rotate your hips to the right. And then heart to the left. Next, inhale, release the twist. Come back to center, sweep your arms up over your head. Exhale, slice your hands down into heart center. Shift your gaze to the tips of your fingers, soft gaze. Maybe set an intention for your practice today or maybe your whole day, your whole Sunday. Inhale. And exhale, release your hands using good body mechanics. Make your way onto your back. So for me, that's going to be a ge generous bend in the knees, heels on the earth, hands behind the thighs, lowering myself down. And then start to put a bend in your right knee. Draw your right knee to your right shoulder. Lengthen your left leg long. Interlace the fingers of both hands on your left shin. Flex all 10 toes back towards your face. And draw the right knee in the general direction of the right shoulder. And then release the shin. Start to straighten the right leg just to the point where the sole of your right foot is pointed toward the ceiling. So there could be, if you look at my leg, I got super tight hamstrings. Could be a generous bend in that right knee, but interlace both hands on the back of your right thigh. And we're gonna use a push-pull movement here. Engage the muscles of your legs as if you were pressing your right heel toward the bottom edge of your mat. Engage the muscles in your arms as if you were trying to drag your right knee to your right shoulder. So maybe tons of engagement here. 
Maybe muscles in the leg shaking, maybe not. Now relax that engagement. Keep your left hand on the back of your right thigh to your right arm out to the side. Use your left hand, draw your right heel any amount closer or across the center line of your body. We're looking for sensation primarily. I'm getting a lot of hamstring, but also a little bit of IT band in the right thigh. On an inhale, bring the sole of your right foot so it's parallel with the ceiling again. Change hands, right hand behind the right thigh, to your left arm out to the side. Lower the pinky edge blade of your right foot any amount closer toward the earth. When your left hip starts to lift up, that's far enough, that's plenty far enough. That right hand is a, is a really handy tool to support that right thigh. And on your next inhale, sweep the sole of your right foot back parallel to the ceiling. Exhale, interlace your hands on your right shin again, right knee to right shoulder, and then release your right leg, let it draw long, sole of the right foot reaching toward or past the bottom edge of your mat. Put a bend in your left knee, interlace both hands on your left shin, flex all 10 toes, and drag your left elbow, or your, your left knee rather, in the general direction of your left shoulder. Now release your left shin, straighten your left leg, the sole of the left foot parallel to the ceiling, maybe a straight leg, maybe a generous beat, bend, interlace both hands in the back of your left thigh, push, pull, push the heel of your left foot toward the bottom edge of your mat, engage the arms, pull left knee toward left shoulder. So with the detox, I mentioned, I, I didn't say it quite this strongly, that the idea that I think the idea of twists in yoga detoxifying the body to be mostly nonsense. But I've also heard the opposite extreme that there's no such thing as detox. Like detoxing isn't a thing. And I don't agree with that at all. I disagree with that as well. Relax that left leg. Keep the right hand on the back of the left thigh to your left arm out to the side and start drawing your left heel across the center line of your body. But the detox pathways are pretty banal. And there are things that we can do to impede them. There are things that we can do to encourage them. But in our natural state, we're gonna detox anyway. So that's urination, defecation, menses, and perspiration are our general uh, banal, but, but very helpful in helpful detox pathways. And then what, what we could do to potentially impede them that we wanna avoid, and what we could do to encourage them is a topic probably better for another day. All right, and your next inhale, sweep the sole of your left foot parallel to the ceiling again, change the grip with the hands, Left hand behind the left thigh to your right arm out to the side. Lower the pinky edge blade of your left foot any amount closer to the ground. Once again, when that right hip point starts to lift up, that's plenty far.
on an inhale, sweep to slowly your left foot back up to parallel with the ceiling. Release behind that left thigh, but interlace the hands on the shin again. One last little gentle squeeze, left knee toward left shoulder, and then join it with the right. Give yourself a nice little hug here. Maybe lifting your chin towards your knees. Maybe not. And then release the upper back, back of the head down to the earth. Bring your shins parallel to the earth. Knees holding over the hips. Flex all 10 toes back towards your face. Tee your arms out to the side. Inhale here in the center. Exhale, drop both legs any amount over to the right. Maybe think about starting to twist the hips a little to the right as well. Gravity should do this for it here, but you can support it with a little bit of muscular engagement. Inhale, sweep the knees and shins back up to center, shins parallel with the earth again. Exhale, lower both legs over to the left. Give gravity a little bit of assist. Visualize a rotation of your hips to the left. And the structure of the body is, is helping us engage the chest in this twist as well. Inhale, back up the center. Exhale, lower your knees to the right. Inhale, center. Exhale, left. Inhale, center. Exhale, right. And we're going to hold right here. Maybe the knee, the legs come a little closer to the earth here. Maybe they don't. And either way is good and is doing it right. So physical cues in the body that we're over twisting, that we're twisting too much. One is like any kind of pain in the lower back, I would back out of the twist. And the second is if you lose the breath. My goal in my yoga practice isn't to be able to do super acrobatic athletic poses. It's to not struggle, to not struggle in the practice. So we don't want to struggle in our twist. Inhale, bring the knees and the shins back up the center. Exhale, drop both legs over to the left. We're going to hold here three breaths. Inhale, bring your knees and shins parallel to the earth. Exhale, hug your knees again. Give yourself a nice squeeze. And the transition here will be to tabletop. So if you can do this with good body mechanics, rocking from head to heel, that's fine. But if not, it's also fine to roll over to the side, stack your joints, and lift yourself up. In this tabletop, in this quadruped position, think about stacking joints again. So hips float over the knees, shoulders float over the wrists, index fingers at 12 o'clock. Ground down into your index knuckle and thumb. And then on an inhale, maybe tuck your toes, but drop your belly down toward the earth. Lift your gaze, hands, elbows, shoulder width apart. Drag the heels of your hands back towards your knees as if you could. Engage the muscles. And then as you exhale, press into your hands. Press into your shins. Puff the space between your shoulder blades up toward the stars. Inhale, drop your belly. Open your heart. Exhale, round through your shoulders. Do four more of these at the cadence and the pace of your own breath.
and then find a neutral spine position and come into a child pose, child's pose. Bring your big toes together to touch, press the tops of your feet down into the earth, knees out nice and wide, lower your hips down towards your heels, maybe place a block under your forehead or your heart. Or maybe let gravity draw your forehead and your heart down toward the earth. Both of these are right. Both of these are doing it right. And sometimes a child pose can be active. We'll do a little of that later. But for now, see if you can disengage muscular engagement here. So no need to aggressively press the hips down toward the heels. Well, what, what does it look like to just not fight gravity in allowing that to happen? And your next inhale, float up into tabletop. And you may need to walk the hands forward for this, but find a modified high plank on the knees. Index fingers pointing at 12 o'clock again. Float your shoulders over your wrists. And then on an exhale, tug your elbows in towards your waist, lower down onto your belly. And then walk the hands forward, sphinx pose. Float your shoulders over your elbows. Index fingers at 12 o'clock, press into your index knuckle and thumb, lengthen the legs long, soften your belly, and then engage the muscles as if you were trying to drag your elbows back towards your waist. Press the shoelace parts of your feet down into the earth enough that the knees start to lift. Inhale. Exhale. Lower your heart down to the earth. Hands under your shoulders. Press up and back into child's pose. This time a little more activity here. So maybe think about pressing your seat any amount closer down towards your heels. Maybe pressing down into your index knuckle and thumb here. Maybe using the hands to press the hips back a little bit. Inhale. Rock forward. A modified high plank. Adjust the hands as you need to. Exhale, lower your heart down to the earth. Heart opener here, so it could be easy cobra. Hands under the shoulders. Peel the heart up off the earth. Tug the elbows into center. Drag the heels of your hands back towards your waist. Exhale, child's pose. Knee inhale, rock forward. Exhale, lower down to the earth. Inhale into any heart opener of your choice. Exhale, child's pose. Inhale one more time. Rock forward. Modify high plank. Exhale, lower down. Inhale, open your heart. Exhale, child's pose. Inhale, lift back up into tabletop. This time, slide your left hand to the center of your mat. So left hand maybe directly under the sternum. On an inhale, place your right hand on your right hip. Open your heart over to the right. Lost an earbud here. And then as you exhale, sweep Right hand under your body. Walk the fingers of your right hand further to the left. Come on to the right temple and the right shoulder. Inhale, unwind. Sweep the right hand either up toward the heavens or right hand on right hip. And then exhale, release your right hand down to the earth. Right hand under your right sternum. 
Inhale, open the heart up to the left. Exhale, slide your left hand over to the right. Inhale, rise, lift out of this position. Open your heart up to the left again. Exhale, release your left hand down to the earth. And then walk your hands forward. Index fingers at 12 o'clock. Tuck your toes. Press down into your index knuckle and thumb. Exhale. Lift your hips up and back into downward facing dog. Find some gentle movement in your lower body. Warm your legs. Maybe pedal the feet out. Maybe sway the hips. And then find some stillness. Allow gravity to draw your heels down toward the earth. Press down into your index knuckle and thumb. Press your thighs toward your belly, belly toward your thighs. Draw the elbows ever so slightly further down toward the, the earth and relax your neck. Breathe. Next, inhale, lift your right heel up toward the heavens. Exhale, step your right foot forward. Maybe replace the right hand with the right foot. Hands can be on the earth. They could be on blocks. Or lift yourself up. Float head over shoulders, more or less over hips. Right hand on your right thigh, left hand on your right. Inhale right here. Maybe walk that right heel forward a little bit more. Exhale, release your hips forward. Inhale, lift up. Exhale, release the hips forward. Inhale, lift up, stack the joints. Exhale, release forward and hold right here, breathing the whole time. Engage your left glute. Maybe allow your hips to drop any amount closer toward that right heel. So for the twist here, we have a couple options. Left hand can come down to the mat or to a block. Right hand can be in your right thigh or in your right hip. Twist, rotate the hips to the left, open the heart up to the right, or thumbs at your sternum, hands at heart center. Inhale for length, exhale, hook the left elbow on the right, outside of your right thigh. Press the heels of the hands together. Rotate the hips to the left. Heart opens to the right. Maybe lift the gaze, look up over the right shoulder, and maybe not. We're gonna have a, a like a little bit of an unconventional transition out of this. We're gonna transition into a yogic squat. So we'll unwind first. We'll step forward into a forward fold. So if you, you would best be supported in your squat by some props, you can have those at the ready. I'm gonna use a bolster, you might use a block. Inhale, release out of the twist, bring your hands down to the earth, and then step your left foot forward to meet your right into a forward fold. So I'm gonna stage that bolster behind my heels. And then sit down into that squat. Feet hip distance apart, toes turned out, right toes at about two o'clock, left toes at 10. Press your elbows into your inner thighs. Press the heels of the hands in together.
And then we're going to twist from here as well. So lower the fingers of your left hand down to the earth, over to the left. Maybe sweep the fingers of your right hand over to the right. So again, think about rotating your hips to the left, heart opens to the right. And then as you inhale, come back into center. Heels of the hands coming together. Engage the knees into the inner thighs. Inner thighs into knees. Exhale, release your right hand down to the earth. Open your left hand out to the side. Hips rotate to the right. Heart rotates to the left. And then on your next inhale, come back into center. Engage into your Molossana squat again. And then as you exhale, start to lift your hips up. Remove any props that have supported you here. Come into a forward fold. And then inhale for a halfway lift. Shift the weight into the heels, long straight spine, maybe a bend in the knees. Exhale, forward fold. I'm just going to change positions here. And then inhale, bring yourself into a high plank, floating your shoulders over your wrists. Exhale, press up and back into downward facing dog. Relax your neck. Three breaths right here. On an inhale, sweep your left heel up toward the heavens. Exhale, step your left foot forward. If you get stuck along the way, use your left hand, give it a little assist. Come into your low lunge. Maybe with hands on the earth, maybe with hands on props. Maybe left hand on your left thigh, right hand on your right thigh. Walk the heel of your left hand any amount forward. Stack the joints, head floats over shoulders, over hips. Inhale right here. Exhale, engage your right glute. Drop your hips forward. Inhale, lift up, stack the joints. Exhale, release the hips forward. Inhale, stack the joints. Exhale, release the hips forward. We're going to hold here for three breaths. Three more breaths. Start to think about which twist here. You can do a simple twist with or without the support of a block. Or you could do a modified uh, twisted low lunge. Inhale. Lift up. Maybe thumbs to sternum, hands to heart center. Exhale. Go into whichever version of this twist you're going to take here. Rotate the hips back to the right. And then... Maybe press the right elbow into the left knee. Open your heart more, any amount more to the left. Five breaths here. When we transition, we're going to do that squat in the twisted squat again. So start to think about what you might need or want for props there. Inhale, release the twist, hands down to the earth, step your right foot forward to meet your left into a forward fold. So I'm going to change my position so I think the demonstration will be better. Feet hip distance apart, orient your toes to the outside, and then sit down into your Molossana squat. Drop the fingers of your right hand down to the right. Open your heart up to the left. Hips rotate to the right, heart opens to the left. And 
Inhale, come back to center. Engage your hands together. And then on an exhale, change sides. Fingers to the left hand, reach for the earth. Open your heart out to the right. Hips rotate to the left, heart rotates to the right. Wringing the water out of this dish rag. Articulating this movement in our spinal column. And then from here, come back into your squat. And on an inhale, breath lift into a forward fold. Inhale for a halfway lift. Exhale, high plank. Tap your knees down to the earth. Side saddle your legs off to the side. Come onto your back using good body mechanics. Hook the pinky edge blade of your right foot on the outside of your left thigh and either heel of your right hand on your right inner thigh, straighten that right arm or thread the needle. Threading your right hand into that little triangle shape we've created. Flex all 10 toes, right, toes on the right foot, flex toward the right knee, toes on the left foot, flex toward your face. Push the right knee forward toward the top edge of your mat. Pull your left knee in towards your left shoulder. Please this, thread the needle. Left hand to the right shin, just below the knee. Draw your right knee towards your left shoulder or eagle legs. Lift both knees as if you were trying to touch yourself in the chin. And then left hand on the right shin, same movement. Drag the right knee any amount closer towards your left shoulder. Maybe tee your right arm out to the side. Maybe flex the toes or maybe relax them. I haven't noticed that that makes any difference for me in my practice. It doesn't move the needle for me one way or the other. And release this nautilus pose. Come back to pinky edge blade of your right foot hooked on the outside of your left thigh. Tee your arms out to the side now. Walk your hips a little bit over to the right and then drop your whole left leg and the sole of your right foot down to the earth in this modified supine twist. Option here, if you like, you can shift your gaze out over the fingers of your right hand. Another option, if you wanted to add more um, twisting sensation, straighten your right leg and let gravity draw the big toe edge blade of your right foot any amount closer to the earth. Either one of those works.
On your next inhale, start to lift yourself back up to center. You shifted your gaze to the right. Start with the neck. And then lift the hips. Release the sole of your right foot down to the earth. Hook the pinky edge blade of your left foot on the outside of your right thigh. And then any version of thread the needle. Push, pull. Release, thread the needle, set up for any version of Nautilus pose. So from a uh, supine figure four or eagle legs, right hand on the left shin just below the knee, drag your left knee down towards your right shoulder, any amount. Release Nautilus pose. Come back to the supine figure four with the sole of your right foot on the earth. Pinky edge blade of your left foot hooked around the outside of the right thigh. Walk your hips over to the left. Drop your knees over to the right. And both of those tools that we talked about for the other side, maybe shift your gaze to the left, maybe straighten that left leg. All just options. We're going to come out of this. Start with the neck first. Shift the gaze back to center if you've moved that, the neck. And your hips back up and then release the sole of your left foot down to the earth. Happy baby. I'm going to choose to do this with a block under my SI joint. You could do this with or without the block. Soles of the feet parallel to the earth. Put a generous bend in the knees. Maybe hands behind the thighs. Maybe on shins. Maybe you hook the peace fingers around the big toes. This is home for me. Or maybe take your hands out to the pinky edge blades of your feet. Option, if you choose, friends, do a little gentle rocking from side to side. Turn your happy baby into a joyful baby. And then release your happy baby. And however you want to get there, whatever that shape looks like to you today, use good body mechanics to come into any final resting shape on your seat, belly, back, or your side. Balancing the two tandem qualities of relaxation and alertness. And release that ujjayi breath, come back to a comfortable, Natural breath.
that before you change anything, check in with the organism of your body and, and determine what she wants. And if what the organism of your body is asking for now is more rest, please know that you, you don't need my support or approval or permission to ignore every other cue that I offer and close out the practice in your final resting shape. And you, you have all of those for me. You don't need them, but you have them. Uh, if what the organism of your body wants right now is, is movement, start to initiate that movement with some deeper breaths. Feeling for fullness on each inhale. And completeness on each exhale. If your path this movement is morning is if your path this morning is movement, perhaps start to reanimate your body with some small movements, maybe wiggling your fingers or your toes. Maybe something with the neck, maybe gently dropping your chin from shoulder to shoulder. And if you're on that movement path, go from small size movement to medium size movements. Maybe you're rotating your hands at the wrists, your feet at the ankles. And then no rush at all, but anytime you're ready, medium size to large movements. Could be a full body stretch. If you're on your back, it could be putting a generous bend in your knees, soles of your feet on the earth, and dropping your knees from side to side, allowing your legs to act like windshield wipers. And once again, if you're closing out your practice in your final resting shape, change nothing. Stay exactly where you are. For everywhere, everyone else, please make your way onto one side, your left or your right side into a fetal position. Check in with your body. Notice how your body's feeling. We did a lot of work on neck at the beginning of the practice. So maybe check in with the connective tissues and the state of the tissues in your neck, but also in the poles of the spine too. We articulated a bunch of movement in the spine. Check in too with the quality of your nervous system. What's the quality of your nervous system now post-practice? And then press yourself up into any seated position. Do anything you like with your hands. Thank you, friends, for allowing me to guide you through your practice today. I appreciate your energy, your breath, and your practice. If you're moved to do so, draw your thumbs to the space between your eyebrows. Blessings to you and your family. And that concludes our practice for this morning. Great job, friends. Again, I'm Chris. I'm from Transformation Nation Yoga and Wellness. Thank you for joining me for Gentle Vinyasa in this twist intensive version. You're doing amazing in your practice. Keep going.